Welcome everyone to session six of your AI agent mini MBA. We're almost halfway through the curriculum. This is going to be the second of our more hands-on practical sessions after the introductory four sessions that were mostly higher level content. And in this session, we are going to talk about integrations. And by integrations, I mean your AI agent is going to automatically take actions in your tool. This is when it crosses from informing you of things to doing real work on your behalf. So uh, quick reminder, what is an AI agent? An AI agent does work on your behalf. It is not a chatbot or a copilot. It is not a productivity tool that you go visit in a website and click buttons. An AI agent does work for you automatically behind the scenes once you've set it up. And uh, remember, we talked about the three characteristics of an AI agent. It's proactive. It wakes up on its own to do work. It's integrated. It takes action directly in your tools. And it's repeated. It can do the task many times and learn to do it better. In the last session on triggers, we focused on the proactive element of AI agents, how they wake up to do work on your behalf. And in this case, we're going to focus on the integrated element, how the AI is going to take action directly in your tools. So I wanted to break this down into four categories or four ways that an AI agent can interact with your tools. The first one we covered last time, which is listening for changes in your tools. Like a new email has come in, a record has been updated in our CRM, a form has been filled out. Those are all the listening examples that we talked about in the triggering session, the previous session. What I want to talk about today are the three other major capabilities that we're going to give our AI agents by integrating them deeply into our existing tools. The first is we're going to enable our AI agents to find things. Look at all the email newsletters that came in the last week. Look at all the customers in our CRM that are above a certain deal size. Look at all the rows in this spreadsheet that correspond to a certain customer or a certain tag or filter. Look up information. And then once you look up that information, you can use it in a couple ways. You could use it to analyze it, summarize it, synthesize it, or you could use it to take action on the thing that you've looked up. That's finding information. You might hear in other contexts of being referred to as searching for information within your tools. That's one uh, capability we'll explore today. The second is creating new stuff, making stuff. <laughs> this can be sending email. This can be creating new records in your CRM. This can be creating new Google Docs. This can be creating new rows in a spreadsheet. This can be creating entirely new spreadsheets. Uh, much like a human employee makes stuff and does stuff, so too will, will your AI agent. And the fourth is updating stuff that already exists. So this, you could think of this as like replying to an email, updating a record in your CRM, updating a row in your spreadsheet, et cetera. And so now we're going to switch to the practical part of the session, and I'm going to show you examples of each of these three types of capability, finding, creating, and updating. Let's dive in. Okay, I'm switching over to my relay.app tab now. And the first thing I want to show you is uh, finding, finding information. And so I'm going to just kind of skip over the trigger in this case and make a simple manual trigger. And I'm going to show you a few examples of how you can find things. Uh, let's say I want to find in my email all of the emails that I've received in the last seven days that had my newsletters label on it. The way you would do that is you'd go into the step menu. Remember last time we showed a lot of examples in the trigger menu. Once you've set up a trigger, the next thing after the trigger is the first automated step that the AI agent will take on your behalf after the trigger. And in this case, we type find. And if you type find, you'll see all of the different find steps that exist in all of my connected apps. I have a bunch of apps connected. You can find records in Airtable. You can find list entries in Adio. You can find profiles on, on Blue Sky. You can find folders, list tasks, and ClickUp, et cetera, et cetera. You can find things in a lot of different products. And in this case, I'm gonna show you how to find emails within Gmail. When you're setting up a find step, the first thing you need to decide is, am I looking for one specific thing or am I looking for a list of many things? Now that sounds a little bit silly, but let me make it more concrete. One example would be, uh, I just received an email from a customer and I need to look up their specific record in my CRM. I wanna find one thing. Another case, would be I want to find all the email newsletters that have come in in the last week. And then I want to find a list of things. So do you see here after I click email returns, it's telling me, do I want to find a single email or a list of matching emails? In this newsletter case, I want to find a list of matching emails. So I want to find every email 
that was a newsletter in the past week. Once I've set up my find step to find the list, you're going to notice that the experience is extremely similar to when we were setting up our filters for the trigger in the last class. Remember, the filters govern the subset of those elements or events that you want to take action on. In this case, I want to filter down to the subset of my emails that I want to work with or process. And so let me show you how to add a couple filters. I can add a filter uh, based on the send date. I want things that come after a week ago, aka I want things that occurred in the last seven days. And so now you can see that we're going to only find emails where the send date comes after today's date minus one week. There's kind of a convoluted way of saying emails in the last week. And I can say I want the label to have my uh, newsletters label. So now, just like we did in the trigger case, I've now configured this as a fine step to on the fly look up all the emails that match these criteria. Now in the trigger case, we had that little preview box at the bottom. Uh, and I'm going to show you how with a fine step, you can similarly test it to see what would have come back if this was running for real. If no emails are found, you could either continue or pause the run and send a notification. I'm going to, I'm going to explain this for a moment because this is relevant to all fine steps. In some cases, when you're looking up information with a fine step, it's kind of optional. Like I want to analyze all the newsletters that have come in in the past week. But if there haven't been any newsletters in the past week, I have nothing to analyze. No problem. That's not an error situation. It just means there's no data. On the other hand, if I receive an email from a prospect and I expect to see them in my CRM and they're not in my CRM, that's an error. That means that something is out of whack with my CRM and something else in my data pipeline is broken. And so you might want your AI agent to alert you. They, ah, I couldn't find something in my CRM. Uh, and so that's the difference between these two settings. Is it, do you expect it to sometimes be empty because this is possibly optional? Or do you really expect something to be there? And if the AI can't find anything, it has to notify you. So I'm going to give you that result. And if more than 50 emails are found, I'm just going to continue with the first 50. Again, this are an optional case. I'm summarizing some newsletters. It's okay to take the first 50. And now if I test this step, you'll be able to see how many emails were retrieved. You can see that I received 16 newsletters in the last week, and you can look at all of the subject of those newsletters. So that's the first example of a find step. We're finding a list of emails that match your given criteria. You can imagine something like find all of the records in my CRM where the deal size is above X, find all the events in my calendar that are with high priority external guests, et cetera, et cetera. That's that class of find step. I want to quickly show you the other class of find step that I mentioned, which is looking up one very specific record. So let's say, for example, um, I have an email address uh, that came in uh, via form or via email or something. I'm just going to do it in a manual trigger in this case to show you. But you could imagine that an email has come in and I want to go see if that person is in my CRM. In this case, I'm going to go to my CRM, which is HubSpot. And you can see that once again, we have this find step, find record. But in this case, I'm looking for a contact and I'm looking for a single record because every you email address is unique. I want the single exact contact that matches this email address. And so I can add a filter to make sure that the email address of the contact matches the email address that came in via my trigger. And if this time no record is found, I want to pause the run and set a notification because I really expect this email to exist. So let me put in, uh, let's see, am I even in our CRM? in my own email address, I'll test it. And indeed, you can see there's an entry for me in our CRM. Now I'll put in uh, an example of someone that I don't think is in our CRM. Test at example com. And you can see that no data was found. So those are the two ways you want to use find steps. Do you want to look up one very specific thing that you know should exist or do you want to look up a list of items that all match certain criteria that you want to analyze or process in some way? That's find step. That's how you use your AI agent to find things that you can then use in subsequent steps. The next class of automated integration I want to show is creating stuff. <laughs> so you want to send an email, you want to make a document, you want to add a row to a, a, a spreadsheet. And typically, like let's go to the Gmail case. Typically, uh, create 
actions are going to start with the word create. Sometimes they add with the word, they start with the word add, but often they start with the word create. So in this case, you can create an email draft. You can create an email draft reply. You can create a draft from a template. Or sometimes uh, a creation action will have something more descriptive, like sending an email or sending a Slack message. So let's say I want to send an automated email. I want to send it to the email address that came in the trigger. And I just want to say, hello. I've now configured my AI agent that whenever I click, this is a super simple one, whenever I click to start that run manually via manual trigger and I enter in an email, we're going to send that email address an email that just says, hello. That's an example of a creation action. Another creation action would be adding a record to an existing corpus or adding a row to existing spreadsheets. So similarly, I could do uh, create record. Remember, we were, we were working in HubSpot in the last session. I could say I want to create a contact and I want to create a new contact with this email address. So I showed you how to send an email. I showed you how to create a contact uh, record in HubSpot. Now I'll show you how to add a row to a spreadsheet. If you want to add a row to a spreadsheet, you can just start typing add row and you'll see that the option that comes up is add row to sheet. When you're adding a row to something that exists, you first need to specify what spreadsheet do you want to add the thing to. So I'm going to look in my bank of spreadsheets um, and I'll pick invoices uh, and I want to add to this invoices row. And then I can see when you're adding a row to this spreadsheet, here are the fields that you need to specify. You need to specify a vendor name. You need to select a date and you need to select an amount. So that's how you can use an AI agent to add a row to a spreadsheet. Last, I'm gonna show you how to create a new Google document. So you could, once again, you want to create something, you think to yourself, I want to either add something or create something. I'm going to type create document. And you can see here, you can create a Google Docs, uh, a Google Docs document. You can specify in which folder you want to create this document, what the title of the document is, and then the content of the document. So those are all of the ways that an AI agent can create or add content on your behalf send emails, send Slack messages, add rows to spreadsheets, create new contact records in HubSpot, create new deal records in Salesforce, create new documents in Google Docs, et cetera. And of course, these are, these are often the, the actions where your AI agent is adding the most value on your behalf because it's doing, it's doing real work. The last type of step I wanted to show you, the last type of integration automation step I want to show you is updating something that already exists. Now, to update something that already exists, we need to first get that thing. That's a little abstract, but let me tell you, tell you what I mean. We can get that thing that we need to update in two ways. One, it could be the thing that triggered this AI agent to wake up in the first place. Like remember last time we showed an email received trigger. I think we showed a record created trigger. If you have received an email or created a record and that is what's triggered your workflow, you can then quickly add an update step to work on that record. So let me show you an example. Let's say we have a trigger, which is a record, uh, uh, new record added in HubSpot, and it's a new content object. So every time a new contact is added in HubSpot, this is gonna trigger. And then let's say I wanna, for example, update that contact. I'm gonna type update record, go down to HubSpot. And then whenever you have an update step, the first thing the update step is going to ask you is what are you updating? You see where it says select a record up here? What do I want to update? In this case, I want to update the contact that came from my trigger. I want to update the contact. Let's say I want to say, you know, I want to make their life st cycle stage uh, lead, for example. So once I have the object from the trigger, I can easily update it to mark its life cycle stage as lead. So this is the most common way to update things. A trigger has fired. Some state change is needed on that object that has caused our AI agent to wake up. And then you use an update step to apply that change. The other case is using a find step like I just talked about about 10 minutes ago. So in this case, I'm instead going to say, uh, I'm going to start with a manual trigger just for testing. 
And I'm going to start by some finding some rows in a spreadsheet. And again, I'm going to look in that invoices spreadsheet. If you look at that in, in invoices spreadsheet, and I want to find all the rows uh, where the vendor contains relay data. So now I've found a bunch of rows. And now I want to update each of those rows. Now I'm in this particular case, uh, I'm going to actually switch to finding a single oh, row. Wow. We'll, I'll talk about list constructs and loops in a, in a later session. But let's say I know that there's a single invoice, a single invoice that the vendor name is related app, and I want to then update that row to have a different date for some reason. That's kind of a contrived example, but you get the principles behind it. Once again, the first thing an update step will always ask for is what are you updating? And that updating, in this case, we're going to update the row that came from our find step in step two. So whenever you have an update step, whenever you have an update step, you, because you need to know what you're updating, you either have to have a trigger that produces the thing that you want to update, or you need to have a find step that finds the thing that you want to update. And once you've found the row in step two, you can update it in step three to say the date should be the current date. So that's how you work with an update step. So to quickly recap, AI agents can integrate with your tools in four ways. They can listen for changes. We covered that last time in the trigger session, for example, a new email or an updated CRM entry. Then they can take three kinds of actions. One is they can search or find things. They can look up emails that match certain criteria. They can look up contacts with a certain email address, et cetera. Number three is they can create new things or add new things, add rows to a spreadsheet, create new records in your CRM, send messages in Slack, et cetera. Or number four, they can update existing things. And when you're creating, a, when you're using an update capability, you typically are gonna pair that with a trigger that alerted you to the need to change that thing or a find step that found the thing. And so it, it's super simple, right? Create, find, update, and listen. But it turns out that if you string these different sets of operations together, you can actually take very powerful and advanced actions in, in all of your underlying tools. So that wraps up session six. We've now covered in a kind of a more practical area of the course. We've now triggered triggers, which are going to wake up your AI agent and tell them to do things. We've covered integrations, which are how your AI is going to take actions once it knows what to do. Next session, we're going to add the actual intelligence to your AI agent, which typically sits between the trigger and the action where the AI figured out what it should actually do. So stay tuned and I hope to see you in the next one.